زين يلا على تتربي يلا ابو زين I was initially only going to vlog on Friday but I realized that there's so much going on in my week that maybe I could do a vlog for all of the days and just release it on a Friday so today's Tuesday 17th October um, just left the office because I've got a call that one of the sisters at one of our projects is basically having a relapse now this is probably one of the most difficult projects that we run at the moment um, because it's to do with mental health um, and especially regarding women here. So you guys are going to see and I'll explain a bit later on but I'm on my way there now because she's apparently throwing rocks at people and trying to destroy the police so I'll update you once I get there. So basically she was throwing rocks out this window um, at the neighbours down there. And after a bit of sellotape, we've managed to fix that. But, uh, of course, with someone like Mariam, it's not just a case of putting sellotape on her. We've calmed her down and she's making tea. So Mariam just basically talks to herself. This is one of the parts of her illness. <laughs> So even if I just talk to myself, she'll just carry on rambling on. Um, unfortunately, she was married at one point. She tried to burn her tent down, um, kill her husband. So she's quite one of the extreme cases that we have here. Um, that's why I've got to be careful with stuff like knives and stuff around her. Now she's cut the apples. I've got to make sure I put the knives away. <laughs> خلي عادي خلي عادي تحكي لا خلاص حكينا ايش بدك عشان تشتري يا مريم ليش تضرب نفسك اريد الذهاب لاولادي لماذا ما اريد اريد اولادي يعني يجوا لعندي بروك معهم دايم معهم طعميهم حرام مظلومين والله ابوهم ظالمون اوكي سو جست ووك اب اند it's like Wednesday, 8.30 in the morning. I've overslept actually. But we're going on a special trip today. Uh, me and Raquel. Any comments, Raquel? Okay, so you'll find out where we're going shortly. What's so funny? You're not going. my old life I'm giving thanks to the most high cause I could have been anything dead or in jail or addicted to heroin cause this world is a scary place where they teach us how to hate the people that we don't know but they don't know that we all came from one soul okay I'm not with this show with terrorists or my criminal you can blame a scapegoat, but I pray for peace and not war. I said I'm not what they show, a terrorist, nor am I a criminal. You can blame a scapegoat, but I pray for peace and not war. Okay, would you like to explain where we're going today? We are going to the hospital <laughs> with some sound huh? with some sound so people can hear okay. you I'm so tired right now okay we're going to the hospital today inshallah to find out what the baby is and also because my husband's yeah, got a baby a meeting I'll be quiet <laughs> so basically we're going to find out today if it's a girl or a boy right inshallah inshallah to be honest I'm old school I'm against this stuff I'm the kind of person that when it comes out, then you find out what it is. Yeah, because you don't have to. You know, do you the don't use all this technology. You just like you don't have to like get the baby clothes. Yeah, but you don't need to. So we are now at Hand in Hand Hospital. It's a brand new hospital. 
and we're really fortunate to have something like this here. Kel, going in now. I think I'm not allowed in past this point, am I? Yeah, we'll take the keep okay. We'll keep there anyways. Okay. So while uh, Raquel's going in there to get her scan done, I'm going to be going into the rest of the hospital um, to basically see the solar panels which way. So we're now on the roof of Hand in Hand Maternity Hospital. And if you take a look behind me, these are the solar panels right here. This solar station and solar well was donated by Muslim Council of Hong Kong. You can see the panels here, mashallah. And the beautiful thing about this um, station is the fact that not only does it give water, which is stored in this big tank here, to the hospital, it also gives power in emergency for the children's ICU um, unit. This is a specially designed um, room and this is probably the best state of the art. This is like being in a European hospital. You can see, mashallah, all of the best equipment here. Um, they've also got a bed here for people to sleep in. Most of this equipment, I don't know what it is, but you can see that it's state of the art. And the beautiful thing about the solar station is that it will help to power this in emergency. So if there's children in here that need vital treatment, the hospital will still have power if there's no fuel, um, like uh, diesel to run the generators and so on and so forth. So a big thank you to Muslim Council of Hong Kong and of course, hand in hand um, and One Nation, everyone who's been part of helping to make these things happen. These are British charities working on the ground here in Syria. A few moments later, Okay, alhamdulillah, I just came out of my appointment and I know what gender the baby is and I don't know whether to tell my husband now or to keep it as a surprise but I'm really really happy and I actually felt like crying in there but I actually couldn't uh, video because there were other sisters in the room but alhamdulillah, uh, Allah answers du the du'as you know, never ever think that Allah won't hear your du'as because he will Okay, so basically we got home, it's about 10, 20 now, it's been a long day. Um, I has been teasing me all day, she's not telling me what it is. Whatever. <laughs> You're going to give us the grand reveal. Da, 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 da. What is it? Them? What is it going to be? Dum, 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 I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> a baby. A baby, inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. Um, obviously, as Muslims, we believe in Ayn and so on and so forth. Our work is to document the projects that are going on. And for us, we wanted to show you guys hand in hand the hospital, yeah. the amazing work they're doing. And we wanted you guys to know that it's British donors like yourself, Alhamdulillah, and a British charity that's enabled this amazing maternity hospital to be built here in Syria. Um, me and Raquel know what it's like. One of our children has been born here. And the facilities are really, really poor, especially after the loss of many, many hospitals. Even maternity hospitals have been bombed. Mm. So, and you know, it's part of the hospital that I did have Rakaya in was one of the best hospitals here. And sadly, it lost funding, so it had to close down. So even that one closed down. So the situation here is that the service that Hand in Hand are providing uh, is amazing. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to another one of their hospitals, um, which they've built under the ground. So inshallah, I'm going to be vlogging that experience as well. You're going to see that tomorrow. Um, but we want you to check out the work. And let's see how tomorrow goes. This is the stuff we have to deal with. One of the patients here at Dal Arkham has set her room on fire. And subhanAllah. So the fire is just taking place. The fire is just taking place. It's caused a massive scene in the home. Um, but now, of course, I've confiscated lighter from her. Subhanallah. It's a fire. Dal Arkham. And now we have to inject her. So this is the aftermath of the fire. She burnt the whole room. 
burnt her bed with this lighter. خليهم مفتوح يشان الهواء. Okay, so we're getting ready to move. Um, we're going deeper inside Syria now. I'm here with my co pilot. Been a crazy day so far um, at the Mental Health Institute, Dal Arkham, which is a project for um, the protection and empowerment of women. Uh, I take my hat off to everyone who's involved in that project. It's a really, really difficult project, and there's none like it in the north of Syria. Um, a video is going to come out later on this week as well, inshallah. We need anyone, any charities who can help us with expertise, with support for that project. You know, we implore you, we beg you. This is something that's really, really needed. Anyway, we're now heading deep down into Syria. Can't give you the location, but we're visiting another hospital uh, that's been built by hand in hand. And there's an important reason for that that I'm gonna to explain to you once we arrive. But this hospital has been built under the ground. The whole hospital is under the ground. Now, what's the reason for that? Many of you guys know that Syria is being bombed into oblivion. And one of the things that have been targeted is hospitals and schools which are an international war crime. You know, against the rules of war. It's against the rules of war to bomb hospitals. You know, we're supposed to be civilized people. We're not supposed to do that. But this is what's been taking place. Now, the whole world has stood by and watched this happen. Stood by whilst this has taken place. You know, we've seen people killed, doctors taken out, you know, patients that were bombed in another place. Now they're in a hospital, they've been taken out as well. I'm very, very excited because we've just reached the location, obviously this is a secret location. I can't disclose exactly where we are, but right now we are at the beginning entrance about five meters under the ground. And check this out. This is something that you haven't seen before. Um, we're gonna start going down. And this is absolutely unbelievable. I have never seen anything like this in my life. Um, you should, I hope the camera can capture how far down we are descending under the ground. Now I want you guys to understand the cost of building a project like this is absolutely massive. Um, but the benefit is even greater. SubhanAllah. Um, I've just come and had a quick look around and I'm completely amazed. I've been told here now we're about 20 meters under the ground right now. And you can see if you take a look down there, this is a fully equipped hospital. I'm going to first walk into some of uh, the medical facilities here or um, operating rooms, theatres. And this hospital is not ready yet. It's going to be ready, inshallah, um, at the beginning of 2018. This is why, hand in hand, they need your support. I want you to just check this out. This is a high stand. This is probably one of the best hospitals that I've seen. Um, after all of the damage and destruction that's taken place here in Syria, if you look, these are the operating theatres. You can see they're starting to get everything ready. And this is going to be one operating theatre with the operating table. You can see all the pipes and stuff being laid. There's another one here. Um, you can see oxygen tanks going in. And there is uh, maternity wards here. There's an accident emergency here. But this starts going towards another entrance down here. Uh, and another exit and subhanAllah they have a massive plan I've looked at some of the maps here and it's absolutely breathtaking so guys we need your support um, I don't even have anything to do with this project but because I heard about this project I thought you know we need to show the people what's going on here they need 8,000 pound or sorry 6,000 pound per generator we need three generators okay now these generators are going to be located in different positions so that if this hospital gets hit they can continue to have power. 6,000 pounds is nothing, guys. Normally, we can raise something like that in 24 hours. So, um, imagine the difference that you can make by supporting this hospital. All right, so we're on our way back from Hand in Hand Hospital. Just trying to boot it back now. So, the point I want to make after coming back from that project and, and, and seeing the 
amazing work that took place there and the way check this stuff out um, let's check that out I don't know if you can see look at that up there look at the destruction um, just the thought that has gone into this project is absolutely um, next level Spana, like I was saying to you before so many people have watched hospitals get bombed and not done nothing now you need to imagine this is in a central location in Idlib so when things get heavy and places start getting smashed to bits like this you know that's a school right there bomb to smithereens okay when places start getting smashed to bits all of the patients are going to be sent to this hospital because the rest of the hospitals are going to close um, because they're not going to be in operation Alhamdulillah because this one is like 20 meters under the ground and it's massive look at this man look at that destruction yeah um, it's still gonna be running so we need 10 people I'm calling for just 10 people to take on this special challenge I need 10 people to raise 600 pound each it's not a lot okay but it is a monumental task that's gonna pay for one generator their target is three generators but we want to try and do one within seven days so if you're a special person and you're gonna fundraise from your friends and family 600 pounds that's all it is um we can make a massive difference i want you to understand that every single person whose life is saved in a hospital you get ajar for every single person who walks through the door you'll get the ajar for being a part of this project you know life support machines that are keeping people alive you know just the electricity lights so that people uh you know the doctors there they can operate on the wounded and the injured you're going to be getting the ajar for it so don't miss out on this opportunity it's an amazing opportunity for reward and we will see you soon all right so it's friday morning as we woke up 7 30 a.m normally today we'll be having a lion but mariam the sister in dar arkham has gone crazy again apparently she has been screaming and i can go for the last two hours so I'm on my way there now. So in this case, I don't think no one in Syria knows what how to do with this. All right. She has basically broken and destroyed the whole room. I've had to lock her in for her own safety. As you guys know, yesterday she burnt half the bedroom. So we had to remove everything. And you can see she's broken all the doors. And she's completely insane at the moment. I don't know, Wallahi, one of the most difficult cases that we've ever had to deal with. Mariam! 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 Taishwe! Uh, we've had to put these boards and the old bed and stuff outside her window because she keeps taking off all her clothes. Um, she's wet herself several times. Um, so now we're just trying to bring in the only medical professional that's here in the whole area uh, regarding mental health. Um, but I don't know how many days we're going to have to wait for him to come because he's the only person in the whole of Freed, Syria in the north. Uh, that has any experience in these cases. He used to work in a mental institute in Aleppo. So we're waiting for him to come and prescribe her some, some medication that so we can calm her down. But at the moment she's destroyed the whole room and she's in a very, very bad state. Um, so please make dua for us. Um, looks like it's going to be a difficult coming days. <laughs> Okay, it's just before Juma now and we're having to make amendments to the rooms because she's become very dangerous. So you can see now, unfortunately, become fully like a prison where food will be served to her. Okay, wallahi, unfortunately we've had to isolate Sister Mariam now. This is the amendments that we've made to the room. We've had to put a lock on it. We've taken absolutely everything out of the room. We've had to block up the windows, leave a small space for light and for breathing. We've taken all the taps out. We've made sure she doesn't have any sharp items. Um, we've taken all the doors off. You can see there's no doors for the bathroom here now. And unfortunately, these are the only facilities that we have. 
Um, Wallahi, my dear brothers and sisters, it's a very, very difficult situation. Wallahi, the sisters like my own mother. Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. So, subhanAllah, it's 10 past 12 now. Unfortunately, it looks like we're going to be missing Juma now because the sister's situation is really bad. So, we're moving her from one room to the other room, uh, making changes. Uh, she keeps taking all of her clothes off. She keeps opening all the water. She's tried to set the rooms on fire before. We're really underqualified for this, but you know, unfortunately, this is all we know what to do at the moment. Um, we've had success with a patient like this before. She came in very bad, not to this level. Alhamdulillah, we've had success with her over a year and a half. And Alhamdulillah, her situation's been much better. But my dear brothers and sisters, I'm gonna end the vlog here today. Please keep us in your du'as. Wallahi, this is the reality. A lot of time you don't get a deep insight into what our lives are like. We have Alhamdulillah sisters like this who are helping us but they've also been through trauma and subhanAllah this war still continues. Jazakallah khair guys, thanks for watching our video. Um, we really hope that that was insightful and gave you a different view of what our lives are like here in Syria. Please drop your comments, uh, let us know what you want to see in the next video and any advice that you think will be useful for us. If you'd like to support any of our campaigns, please check the links in the description box below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you haven't already seen my first video, please check out my first video. See you next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.